Hey everyone, thanks for joining us here on Go Local Live in the Navigate and Credit Union Broadcast Center. I'm Molly O'Brien and I'm joined by local author and illustrator Jeanette Bradley. Jeanette, how are you? Good. Good. I'm so glad to have you. So you have brought with you today your debut children's book, Love Mama, which I'm so excited to talk about this book with you today. Uh, it's a beautiful book. It's beautifully illustrated and written. I had a chance to peek at it online before you came in today. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about your book and your background, which I find um, very fun and exciting. So talk to us a little bit about uh, how you got into children's literature and illustrating because you didn't start out in this career path right away. That's right. I um, actually was an urban planner and after I had kids um, I was reading lots of picture books and I got really interested in them as an art form. I had been studying painting for a while and um, I just got really interested in the interactive way that picture books, um, the reader interacts with them. It's almost like a theater on a really small stage um, because it's the person being read to, the reader and the book interacting with each other and it's like a 3D piece of art as well as um, being painting and so I got really interested in them and started reading lots of them and I had the chance to move here to Providence and um, go to the RISD children's book illustration program um, so I went back to school as an adult um, to learn the illustration part of it and then I started trying to learn how to write my own and it took me eight years but here I am <laughs> Well, I tell you, it was eight years well spent. Um, so this book, again, it is beautifully written and beautifully illustrated. Talk to us a little bit about the inspiration behind the story. Sure. Um, I, the story is inspired by my own kids, in particular my youngest daughter, who had a really hard time separating. Um, when I would drop her off at childcare, she would just cry and cry and cry and I tried all sorts of ways to try to help her feel connected to me while she was away during the day. And so um, I made little books for her with pictures of her family, and I would put little notes in her lunchbox. And Which are the best. Yeah. Handwritten notes for mom are the yeah. best. Um, so one day I was rushing out of the house, and my daughter said, but how will I know that you love me if I don't have something for you to hold? And I realized that she couldn't read what the note said, and that what she cared about was that I had touched this piece of paper, oh. and then she got to touch it, and it was like this magical sense of my touch being conveyed to her. And so um, that was sort of the spark of the idea behind this book. And in the book, um, I used penguin mother because penguin parents leave their babies for long periods of time and if you've ever watched nature videos about them when they come home they have these songs that they sing to each other to find each other and it's incredibly sweet um, so penguin mom leaves and baby penguin is very sad and misses her and doesn't really have a sense of time like toddlers <laughs> um, and doesn't understand how long it will be until she comes back or if she will come back and he tries to find different substitutes for her um, and the thing that helps him feel connected is a box that comes in the mail and it's not really what's in the box it's the sense that the box came from mama that helps him feel connected oh. and so it came from my own experience <laughs> with um, my daughter but I think it's something that really all kids go through I think even even kids who are home all day with mom, mom can't be there 24 seven. Eventually they have to go to sleep or <laughs> mom has to, you know, brush her teeth or something like that. And some kids really struggle with that sense of separation. I think that's, I mean, I just, I think that just hits the nail on the head. And um, I was going to ask you if you, might have done just a little bit of research on why you chose the penguin or the the arctic or the animals involved in the story because you you do use you incorporate some other animals in your illustration um and so i, I kind of wondering if you did any a little bit of research involved in the storytelling i did um i actually had the opportunity to talk to a an animal 
Antarctic scientist cool. who herself is a new mom, oh, which is oh, really so cool. cool. And so I asked her, um, I knew I wanted to use penguins, but I didn't know what other animals lived in the area, and I wanted to make sure that there was some scientific basis behind the animals cool. so that there wasn't, you know, polar bears in the Antarctic or things like that. And so she gave me a lot of advice, and she also told me the kinds of things that you could buy in an Antarctic research station gift shop. Amazing! And so the things that that um, come in the box in the story were kind of based on the souvenirs that one could actually find if one were in a, re a researcher in the Antarctic. So it was very neat. Well, I'm glad that it's not totally just a, out of your imagination. Or <laughs> I'm glad you did put some research into it. That's so neat. Uh, it's funny. I was working from home yesterday, but my husband had on like Planet Nature 2 or whatever, and so they showed these videos of chin strap penguins. And so it's funny because you said if you ever watch a nature video, and I just happened to have that on yesterday when I was working, um, and they had these baby chick penguins with their mom, and they're, the penguins were out fishing, and they're gone for all these long time. So I was like, so fitting, so touching. Yeah. So um, it, it really does kind of drive that point home and how, you know, we are all connected in some way or another, whether it's nature life or human life. And so just that need to want to be around your mom how you could take care yes. of each other. So um, talk to me a little bit about what it was like for you to publish this. You said it took you quite a bit of time. Uh, obviously, you did the illustrations, you did you did the work, you, you went in um, as a local author and illustrator. Um, what advice do you have for people out there who, who might want to go into the children's, children's publishing world? Um, well, my first piece of advice is to read as much as you can to try to read as many new books that are coming out as you can because publishing is always changing and the things that kids are interested in is changing and so there may be books that you connected with when you were a child that you loved and I have my own books that I loved as a child but they're not quite the same That's as true. the format as as things that are being published now and so I always encourage people to read lots of things that are you know hot off the presses um, and yes, it did take time for me, but um, that wasn't all spent writing this book. Yeah. This isn't my first book. So I think that, I mean, it's my first book, I should say. It's not my first manuscript. Um, it's that it, publishing is a long road and people rarely publish their very first book. Um, it looks easy, but it's actually way more complicated than you think it is. And I think if I'd known how complicated it was, I think I may not have set out to try to do it. So maybe ignorance is bliss on that <laughs> one, I don't know. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's, it's basically just keep writing, keep reading, and try to find other people that connect with, um, with that connect with your work and that you connect with their work and that you can share things and get feedback from people because, um, Nobody does this in a vacuum. There's sure. so many people that go into making a book. Um, I, there's just so many critique partners that helped me and along the way. And then once you actually sell the book, there's just a huge team of people that go into um, helping it become a publishable piece of work and marketing and selling it and all of that. It's, it's a huge team. Um, and so not just me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not just you. You mentioned yeah. critique partners. I'm kind of curious. I'm sure your your biggest fans, but also your biggest critics, might be those closest to you, like your kids. What do your kids think of the book? Um, well, my littlest one thinks that I wrote this book just for her, and it's, yes. and it's her book, <laughs> and she loves it. Um, my, you can always keep yeah. it a secret like that for a while, <laughs> right? Just keep it between you two. She yeah. knows. She knows that it's going out into the world, but she. The one thing she's upset about is that I did not name the main character after her. Oh. <laughs> yeah. so, so now you've heard another so one. <laughs> basically, every day she tells me that next up is the book about her, <laughs> um, about the little girl who's exactly her age and yeah. exactly her size and has <laughs> her hair and is named the same thing and does everything she does. So. <laughs> Sounds like it's already written. Yeah, I, I tell her, you know what? 
That's your story. Yeah. <laughs> you should write that story. So. Oh, that's great, though. Yeah. So we have a future, another future local author on our hands. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. So. That's awesome, though. That's great. Well, it's always good to... Um, to get local perspective and we love supporting local works and um, I, I think it's absolutely excellent. Um, you will be at Books on the Square which is over on the east side of Providence uh, in Wayland so if you're interested and that's actually how I found you. I was poking around oh, in the cool. bookstore and they had um, they had a flyer or something up and I was like oh this is story it looks amazing so that's actually how I found you. You're going to be there um, tomorrow Saturday right yeah. This yep. has been a wild week. Um, yeah. Talk to me just a little bit about what it's like for you to be part of the local publishing scene. Um, you mentioned it's not just you that made this book happen. What it's like for you um, to support other authors, illustrators, that kind of thing? Yeah, uh, well, there's so many great authors and illustrators in this in Rhode Island. It's just amazing. I mean, we really are the creative capital. It's just the amount of talent here is unbelievable. And I think one of the best things about publishing in children's literature is that people in Kidlet it, are just wonderfully supportive of each other and show up for each other's book signings and cheer each other on and it's just a really great community. So I'm excited. Tomorrow the event is at 11 a.m. and it's going to be um, a book signing and story time for kids and there's going to be a little craft for kids and some fun food. Awesome. So hopefully it will be a really fun party and just a celebration of love. I, I so. because <laughs> because we all love family and our community and art and literature, which I think is excellent. So congratulations on this. Are we going to do a giveaway? Yeah. Okay. Definitely. All right. Let's do that. So um, we wanted to do a giveaway of a signed book by Jeanette. So how about we do this? Um, right up in on Facebook, the first one to do it if you're interested and you can make it to the event tomorrow. Jeanette will give you a free book of Love Mama. She'll sign it and a nice little message to you. Um, if you can make it to the event tomorrow um, and if you write in on Facebook, then I'll connect with you via email. Uh, again, it's at Books on the Square tomorrow. So right in, we're doing a giveaway right here on Go Local Live, and Jeanette will make it um, to you. So let me know if you can make it to the event tomorrow. Right in on our Facebook page right now. So Jeanette, thank you so much for joining thank us today. You. It's been lovely hearing your story. We're excited to have you. Congratulations thank on you. the book. Again, it is wonderful. So if you get a chance, if you can't make it out to the event, go find her. Where do you like to buy your books? I love to shop at Books at the Square. That's actually my favorite bookstore in Rhode Island, and that is why I'm so happy that I get to do my event there, because I think it's just a really great community, kid-friendly space, and they have a wonderful curated selection of books there. They do. So, they do. It's a, it's a great yeah. spot. There are so many great local book retailers and there are. secondhand shops around here that have good books. Um, just in, in New England, it's always fun to pop in a bookstore. Yeah, I have a friend who does a tour of cool. independent, independent bookstores in New England, and he has a little, it, actually if you look at Josh Funk's uh, Facebook, he has a tour that he does where he drives to all the indie bookstores in Massachusetts and Rhode Island. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. That's really fun. Yeah. We were in... Um, <laughs> We're, we were in Plymouth, and we went in this second, I think that's where we were, and there was like a spiral staircase up, and it was like in an attic, and it was so fun. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was really neat. All right, so we're going to wrap up here with Jeanette and bring on our next guest, so please hang tight. Again, don't forget about that giveaway. Um, let me know if you're interested, and you can make it to the event at Books on the Square. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations again. Thank you. All right, hang tight as we get set up for our next guest on Go 